Old hotel hides royal secret, workers try to smuggle it out. Bob could feel his heartbeat quicken as he shined his flashlight across the room. Whatever was making noises had to be up here, right? Then suddenly, he saw a blurred movement coming through the old slats of the ceiling. Something or someone was up there. He drops his flashlight in a state of panic and it cuts out, causing blackness to swallow the entire room. It was just Bob alone with whatever that thing was in the ceiling. There was no coming back from this. Bob Jones lived an ordinary life in an ordinary small town. He had lived in his home with his wife Linda for 10 years. It was for their forever home, the home where they planned to spend the rest of their lives together. But Bob and Linda had no idea what was lurking inside their forever home. Ten years ago, newlyweds Bob and Linda stumbled across a home that they knew they had to buy. It was everything they were looking for in a first-time house. It had a large garden for bedrooms, an attic, and a gorgeous open-plan living space. But there was something else about this house that the estate agent had failed to mention. A secret that would tear Bob and Linda's world apart. After jumping at the chance to buy the home, Bob and Linda soon moved in. And so, ten years and two kids later, Bob and Linda still live at their home. But something was about to happen in this house, and it was something that would leave Bob and Linda darting out their door and vowing to never return. For the past few weeks, Bob kept getting woken up by the sound of thuds and rustling in the middle of the night. At first, he didn't think too much of it, maybe it was just the wind? But the noises carried on like clockwork every night. Bob brushed it off, but little did he know he shouldn't have. At first, Bob thought it was bees in his attic. He could hear a slight buzzing sound as well as the rustle of something moving. Then, he thought perhaps it was rats. Bob didn't know it at the time, but it wasn't bees or rats that were hiding in his attic. It was something much worse. Two weeks passed and the noises were still happening. It got to the point where both Bob and Linda were having trouble sleeping. Bob couldn't ignore the noise above their bedroom anymore. He had to go check and see for himself. But he had no idea what was waiting for him in the attic. Bob pulled the ladders down and slowly climbed up and into the attic. With every move he made, he could feel his heartbeat in his throat. He very rarely got spooked or scared, it took a lot for him to break a sweat. But what he was about to discover would leave Bob as white as a ghost. He scans the attic with his focused eyes and flashlight, but there seemed to be nothing out of the ordinary. Surrounding him were boxes and boxes of memories and nostalgia. Then suddenly, he heard a noise, a thump and a rustle. It was coming from right behind him. Bob swiftly turned around, but to his surprise, nothing was there. Was he hearing things? He shakes his head and carries on with his search. He was eventually led into the utility room where all would be revealed. But Bob never expected to find what he did. While in the utility room, the noises became a lot louder. Bob was clearly getting close to the source of the noise. He looked around, and then suddenly his heart dropped when he saw blurred movement from coming through the old slats of the ceiling. Something or someone was up there. Bob can feel panic creep up his spine as he tried to get a closer look at whatever was in the ceiling. He flashes his light up there and then, right there he saw it, and a terrible feeling hit the pit of his stomach. He dropped his flashlight in shock and fear, and the light disappeared. Blackness swallowed the entire room. It was just Bob and whatever that thing was in the ceiling. There was no coming back from this. Frantically, Bob tried to reach for his flashlight, but the room was pitch black. The rustling noise was getting louder now. Was the thing in the ceiling now in the room? Without a second to waste he ran out of the utility room, back into the attic, and down the ladder, while screaming out for Linda. He knew he had to tell her but was it too late? After telling his wife the truth about what was in the attic, she was left feeling she felt sick to her stomach. How could they have not have noticed it? But Bob knew he had to capture it on camera. It was the only way people would believe him. Armed with his camera he made his way back up to the attic of horrors. Back in the attic, and then in the utility room, Bob felt his blood run cold. And as expected, the thing in the ceiling appeared, and Bob filmed it while trying to stay as calm as he could. 
He quickly left the room and showed his wife the footage. They were both feeling sick to their stomachs. They knew they had to call an expert. But time was running out. It was only a matter of days before the thing in the ceiling made its way inside the actual house. Linda and Bob eventually called an expert, and an officer soon arrived at their home. But when the officer took a look inside the attic and utility room, there was nothing was there. Either Bob had been seeing things or the thing in the attic was now inside the house. Bob showed the officer his footage to prove he wasn't making it up, and the officer's mouth dropped wide open when he watched the footage back. In his 20-decade career, this officer had never seen anything like this before. After watching the footage, the officer knew he couldn't waste any more time. He had to tell Bob and Linda the truth about the thing in the attic. The officer revealed to Bob and Linda that the thing in their attic was in fact, a giant, dangerous snake. They had to get out. They had to make a move for it now. The officer, from Sarasota Animal Control, identified the slithering snake as a diamondback rattlesnake, and these snakes are not to be messed with. Their venom is deadly and sure does pack a fatal punch. That snake up there, the officer said to Bob and Linda before pointing to their ceiling, that snake will kill you. The officer from the animal control center for the second time tried to catch the deadly snake, but unfortunately, he was unable to. This snake was clever. It knew that people were after it. But if animal control couldn't catch it, who could? Bob and Linda asked their nephew, but even he failed to catch it. That's when Bob had one last idea. It was their last resort. Bob contacted Mark Lampart, a family friend to see if he would come over and try and catch the deadly snake. You see, Mark was familiar with the world's most dangerous creatures he had traveled all across the globe looking for fearsome animals. He seemed like the right guy for this job, but would he able to catch it? Like any man with a penchant for deadly animals, Mark agreed to come and help Bob and Linda out with the slithering serpent in the attic. He spent three hours in their home trying to find it. But when he stumbled across a gigantic piece of dry, shed skin in the attic, Mark realized that this snake had been living with Bob and Linda for a while. After a long and tedious afternoon searching for the vicious viper, finally, Mark managed to catch it. He yanked the snake's tail from the ceiling, and it came crashing down. But it soon dawned on Mark that the animal control officer had made a mistake when it came to the identification of this snake. Instead of a deadly rattlesnake, this snake was actually just a Colombian red-tailed boa constrictor. While this snake is still considered dangerous, it's not venomous. However, it does have razor-sharp fangs and strong muscles that suffocate other animals. But how exactly did this snake get into Bob and Linda's home? Mark revealed to Bob and Linda that boas are semi-arboreal, meaning they're able to climb trees. He stated that this boa had got on the roof from the tree branches. The snake was swiftly taken away by animal control, and although thankfully no one was hurt or injured from this serpent, Bob and Linda still sleep with one eye open. After all you never really know what's inside your attic, do you?